In this video, I'm going to discuss how to export data from SPSS into a file format that can be read by M+. Unfortunately, M+, does not allow you to directly import data from SPSS, and um, so what that means is, is that in order to read SPSS data, you have to convert it into a file format that is readable by the M+, program. And the two file formats that are uh, readable are uh, DAT files and CSV files. So what I'm going to demonstrate in this particular video is how to uh, convert SPSS data into a CSV file and then demonstrate how to import that file into uh, the m program to carry out a basic path analysis. So what we have right here is a complete set of data on five variables. Uh, each row, row would represent a student's responses to measures of performance goals, achievement, and mastery, interest, and anxiety. Now this is a complete data set, and I'm actually going to reserve uh, a discussion of how to import uh, data with, that contains missing values for another video. But for the purposes of, of this video, we're going to start off by just converting this data set by going to File, Save As, and um, what we'll do is we'll click this little button right here for Save As Type, and we're going to go down to CSV. And you can also see that we have options for DAT files. There's, there are actually two options right here. But we're going to go with CSV, and the first step in this process is we have to name the file. So I'm actually going to go ahead and name it. Uh, I'm just going to save over um, a, a file that I've already created. Uh, so we're going to name it path data, and it's a .csv file. And the first thing to note is that when we're saving, we do not want a check mark here. So we want to get rid of that check mark uh, because what we need is a CSV file that does not contain any variable names in that file. So I'm going to click off of this and now click on the Save button. And I'm actually just saving over the other file. And so it's good to go. And so uh, you'll see that in the output, it says data is written to uh, uh, my... Uh, drive and the particular folder uh, and the, the uh, file name is pathdata.csv. So if we want to take a quick look at it, it's this right here and uh, I'm going to double click on it and open it up in the Excel program and so we can see what it looks like. So this is our performance variable, this is our achieve variable, this is mastery, this is interest, and this is anxiety. So you'll notice that by clicking off of the um, uh, request for variable headers, we don't have the actual variable names listed on uh, in the data set. And that's okay. That's actually what we want. We do not want to have the variable names included uh, because it uh, creates some problems when it comes to importing the data into uh, the m program. So we're really all set to go now. We have our, our basic um, uh, data set. And so it's a uh, path data. And this is, like I said, this is a CSV file. So now what we'll do is we're going to open up M plus and go to File, New. And so now there's a box that opens up that allows us to type in uh, the syntax in order to read the, our data in and to carry out our path analysis. So to make life a lot easier, what I've done is gone ahead and created uh, syntax. Um, and I'm just going to copy and paste this in and then just kind of talk you through it. So I am going to paste this in. And so the first thing to note is the first line, it has the title command followed by a colon and then the name of the, um, the, the project. I just, I just call this path analysis achieve followed by a semicolon. Then the next line is uh, the data command followed by a semicolon. And then in this line, we're going to read in our data. So the, the, uh, the actual file, we, we have to have the um, subcommand file is and then we have the actual path uh, to our file as well as the file name itself and then follow that up with a colon. Um, so, you know, basically um, if you're not really great at doing this, just an easy way of doing this is just if you'll click on your file um, and go to properties, you can see this is the location of the, um, of the data of the uh, CSV file. So this is the location here. So it's uh, D colon uh, backslash uh, M plus examples basically and so forth and so then if we just add a backslash and then the name of this then dot CSV that will get us 
the name that we have in our, um, our syntax. So that's all there. Then we have a, a semicolon uh, at the very end. So keep in mind that we have to have a semicolon at the end of each of our lines, uh, except for the ones that, that uh, necessarily start with um, uh, a formal command. So now we've got variable and then colon. So now we're going to lay out what variables are included in the, in the um, data set. And we have to have the variables listed in the order in which they appear in the data file. So we can't randomly um, put the, the variable names in. We want to make sure that they are following the exact order in which they appear in our CSV file. So we have performance goals, achieve, mastery, interest, and anxiety. And so you can either, but you have to have, before you actually start listing the variable names, you, it has to be preceded by names are. Um, so have names are and then the names of your variables in the order in which they appear in the data file. And if you don't have them in the correct order, then when you run your analysis, it's gonna, uh, the program is going to get confused and start attributing uh, data to the wrong variables. So make sure that you've done that uh, correctly. Um, so now uh, the next step is uh, our model command, so model and a, and a colon, and then now we're going to lay out the basic uh, path model. So in this case, we've got achieve on mastery, interest, and anxiety, and then a semicolon. Then interest on mastery, semicolon, and anxiety on performance goals, semicolon. So the basic layout is very similar to what you would see uh, if you're using uh, the simplest command language uh, in Lisserl where you essentially have your dependent measure or the variable that's being predicted on the left side um, and then your predictors on the right side. And in literal, you would have an equal sign instead of the on uh, statement here. Uh, so in M plus though, you're using on instead of the equal sign. So now we're all good to go uh, in terms of running our analysis. So I'm gonna highlight uh, this and click on run. It says, uh, you know, do, we, do you want to save changes to this text file? And so I'm going to click on yes, and I'm just going to call this uh, path analysis. I'll actually I'll call it path analysis goals. Click save, and sorry, I'm just write, writing over. So now you can see that we have our analysis that's been run. You can see the number of observations is 140. That was what was in the original data set. As we scroll down, you see that we get descriptive statistics. Uh, the variable names, sample sizes, mean variance, skewness and kurtosis, and so forth. Scrolling down a little bit further, you get the model fit information, and you get uh, the chi-square uh, goodness of fit test uh, right here. So, and uh, you can see it's uh, indicating statistical significance, which uh, in general is is viewed as an indicator of of poor fit if we have statistical significance. Uh, we have the RMSEA, uh, which is 0.173. Uh, generally speaking, values uh, over 0.08 would be considered indicative of poor fit. Values um, you know, up to about 0.05 uh, would be considered indicative of close fit. And between you know, the 0.05 and uh, 0.08 would be considered kind of acceptable levels. Then you have the CFI and TLI that's presented right here. Uh, for these uh, indices, um, values uh, above uh, 0.95 are considered more uh, indicative of close fit, but values above 0.90 would be considered acceptable. So really overall, we're, we have uh, in, uh, indicators of uh, poor model fit. And then down here, you can see we have the uh, standardized root mean square residual uh, that's printed out here, which is also indicating poor fit. So um, when we look at the model results, you can see the estimates. These are the unstandardized regression uh, or path coefficients, uh, the standard errors, and then uh, the Z values along with the uh, P values for those. So you can see that uh, mastery was a positive predictor of the achieved variable. It was statistically significant. Interest was uh, also a significant predictor of the achieved variable. Anxiety was negatively predictive, but it was not st a statistically significant predictor. Uh, mastery, uh, in terms of predicting the uh, interest variable, was a significant predictor. Performance goals, uh, that was a positive predictor, but it was not statistically significant. So, um, so those are the basic paths in the model. If we go up to Diagram and click on View Diagram, we can see the, you know, the basic model right here. And so, as you can see, you can move things around and straighten them up. 
um, if you want to to improve um, the the diagram that you um, that you have. So that's um, that's the basic way in which you can carry out the analysis by again importing the data into uh, or exporting the data from SPSS to X, to a CSV file and then importing into the uh, MPLUS program. Um, one other thing that I want to mention um, is that when you are import when you're running your analysis, uh, you might have occasion to, to uh, use the uh, use variables uh, subcommand. And the reason why this is important is is that um, it's not always going to be the case that you're going to use every single variable in your data set. Like for instance, if you have a larger data file with a lot of variables included and you only want to use a subset, then you'll probably want to use the use variables uh, subcommand in order to, um, to indicate which variables are being included. And so that's just basically uh, um, done with this command. You just say use variables r and then whatever the names of the variables are that you're from the original uh, data set. So in this case, for this demonstration, I'm going to use mastery, interest, and achieve. And I'm just going to do a basic mediation model uh, with essentially interest mediating between the mastery variable and achieve variable. So I am actually going to, I'm just going to copy this again and go to my M plus file. And um, I'm just going to paste this in so we can see it. And so you can see I've got variables, I've got this, the same basic uh, CSV um, uh, data file that's being read, uh, variables, the names are, again, those are all the names in the exact order in which they are, are appearing in the data set. Uh, we don't have to have any kind of ordering for the use variables um, command. Um, and so now I've got model and I've just got achieve on mastery and interest, interest on mastery. And so again, Notice uh, that the lines are all in ending, except for the, uh, the lines that necessarily have a, a command and a colon. Um, all of them have a, a semicolon. So I'll uh, highlight this, click on Run, and I'm just going to go ahead and save over this. I could have saved it under ne a different name if I wanted to. So I can scroll down, and so I get all the same types of information. As you can see in this case, uh, it's actually a just-identified model. Um, we basically have used up all the degrees of freedom, so the chi-square test is going to suggest, uh, you know, kind of perfect fit. Same, same for the RMSEA and CFI and TLI. So the fit statistics in a just identified model are basically um, not not you uh, are basically useless um, because it's, it's kind of signifying, hey, you've got a perfect model fit, and that's just a function of. Um, uh, degrees of freedom for the model being zero. But nevertheless, as we scroll down, we can look at the individual um, relationships in the model. And if we go to diagram, view diagram, uh, this is it. So this is the basic mediation model uh, that, we, uh, that we ran. Um, you can also see under view, you've got different options um, in terms of you know, different uh, ways in which uh, the information is presented. Um, if I'd asked for standardized estimates, then uh, you know, I could have actually asked for standardized estimates to appear in the model. So I didn't do that in this particular video, but that is an option. Um, and I will probably discuss that in another video. So that concludes this uh, introduction to uh, using um, M plus and uh, with uh, data imported using a CSV file.